Midjourney's image editor is now available to everyone with a massive upgrade. They've added not only a few extra features, but a layer system, which might not seem like a big deal to some, but actually changes the game when it comes to editing images. And this is really, really exciting. And today I'm gonna to run through the entire process of how this editor works. Now, I've always said that Photoshop skills combined with AI art are kind of like the ultimate combination. This helps to sort of bridge that gap a little bit. Now, a lot of people aren't that excited about it, but I think the level of control it now adds is a big step in the right direction. Now I'm logged into Midjourney and you'll notice down here we have the edit tab and I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. The other way you can access the editor is to go to your images, click on an image that you want to edit like say this one and down the bottom here you'll notice editor which is next to more. If you don't see it, head to more options and simply tick more actions so you can get access to the editor. Now when I click editor here, it takes me in to the editor itself. And on the right here we have our generations, which we haven't created any yet, and then how we export the image, our prompt bar at the top, and some tools down the left, which we're going to basically go through and cover. Now, I'm gonna start with the basic fundamentals to show you how this whole editor works. So you'll notice, on, I'm gonna start at the top here, and you'll see this edit and retexture. I'm actually gonna skip and come back to that, and we're gonna start off with move slash resize. Because what we can do is shrink our image, and we can change the aspect ratio. So at the moment where, it's, uh, where it says one to one, maybe we are looking to create something for a phone. We can go nine to 16, or maybe a YouTube thumbnail, we go 16 to nine. We can change the aspect ratio around or even customize that aspect ratio by grabbing these handles, moving it around. And while we have move and resize selected, I can grab my image, move it around and place it where I want. And to a certain degree, I can size it up when you make the image too big or crop too heavily, it does bring up an error. Now you may notice at the moment, this is the aspect ratio is three to two. So if I move this around, it still has that highlighted. So one thing to keep in mind is that you're not necessarily going to see the exact number here on the left, at least not at the moment, while you are making your adjustments. So just remember that. And if you really wanna get close, one thing you can do is simply click on an aspect ratio and then you'll know you're close to that aspect ratio before you make your adjustments. For now, I'm gonna go back to one-to-one -to -one, and you can see there's actually a bit either side of this image because it's not a one-to-one -one image. But let's say I want to remove this blade down here. The way we do that is we head into the paint area of the editor. So I come down here to paint and I can erase or restore. So if I have my brush size, which is pretty big at the moment, I can crank that right up and it becomes pretty big. Now I've removed a bit too much there, so I can come up top here and undo or redo, or I can completely reset the layer, which resets the layer, the aspect ratio and everything. I'm gonna head back to move and resize, make that one to one again, back into paint. And I'm gonna bring the brush size down and just remove the sword. Now, if I don't wanna be quite as aggressive as that, I can click on restore and just sort of like move around. And when you click restore, you'll notice that we get a semi-transparent representation of the original image. So I can cut in there and you can kind of see the blade in there if you look closely. So I can work around the blade if I want to. And so that means I can now highlight this and just simply type in samurai, submit the edit, then just give it 10 or 20 seconds to sort of go through and generate some options. And you can see it's filled in both the sides and removed the sword from this area here. But because we had a bit of a white edging, it's actually continued to frame up that photo. Now we can go over here to the right and we have four options to explore to see which option we think looks the best. I do really think this one here looks the best, but maybe I wanna to head to move and resize and I can move this around, resize it. Now I can't make it any larger than the canvas but I can shrink it a little bit. So maybe I do want to shrink it, bring it in, and maybe I want to get rid of some of these white edges or this edge here. So again, I go to paint, erase, and just simply erase those areas, even this corner down here. Now I've accidentally resized that. I'm going to go undo, use my eraser, and just touch that up. So going around the edges can be a great practice just for eliminating any kind of like funny things that happen with the edge of your images. But essentially I've now erased those edges and I can just submit again. And again, we have our four options. I really like this one here, but the thing is we don't have to stick with this option. If I want to go back, for one, I can, undo doesn't work at this point, but I can go back to this image here or simply click on the one on the left, which has my edits 
intact. Before I choose a replacement, I can go back to this and at the moment we're using version seven. I have personalization off. I can turn my personalization on and go to old film, dust and scratch. I can even change any of my normal prompt settings here. Things like stylization, weirdness and adjust it from there. So now if I submit that edit, close that down, we get some more personalized results on the right. And you'll notice for every single frame we have here, which was submitted for an edit, we have the results to the right. So it's stacked these over here for easy exploration. Now this I think looks pretty interesting. So I can run with that for now if I want to, or I can choose one of these other ones. But here's something that's also interesting. If I come to the drop down here and change from version seven to Niji six, click on my, click on my left thumb here, I've still got Niji 6 selected. Remove version seven from the end, hit enter. We've been able to use Niji 6 to generate the background. And you notice it looks a bit different. So we've got a few different options there. We can take full control of our prompt settings. And there's a lot of really, really handy tools here for editing our images with. But the next one is also a really, really powerful tool that is Smart Select. Now I don't know how well it's gonna work considering the detail in this image. But if I say simply select our samurai, it's selected the shirt. I can go through and continue to click and select him. So I've selected our samurai here. Now I can go erase selection or erase the background. So this is a really handy and powerful way to clean up what's around your image in the editor. So I click erase background and he's been cut out of the background. Now if I hit erase selection, it does the opposite and erases him, which we had selected. So what if I want to change the background to something like New York City Street, old damage photo, remembering to go back. I'm gonna go from Niji 6 back up to version seven. I'm gonna turn my personalization off and now I can generate a fresh new background around our samurai by clicking submit. So now we've got a completely different background. It's even had a hat added. I can go through, choose which one I think makes the most sense. I really like this image here. But there is actually something else as well. For one, I have my edits down the right here. If I click view all, it takes me out of the editor and you can see the recent job here of our samurai. If I leave this completely and go to say the explore page, and we got our uh, explore page, I come back into the edit tab, I can edit a new image. So I can edit from URL or upload an image. So we have the external image editor with all of the same options that we've just covered or I can head back by clicking edit. And you see here our recent edition right here. I click on that and we're back in. I still have my options to choose from. I'm gonna stick with that one this time. So you can actually edit and then leave the editor, and come back to finish off what you've been working on at a later date. But what if I wanted to combine some of those separate generations into one image? Well, there's a way we can do that too. And of course, if I'm happy with this image, I can come down here and upscale to the gallery to create an upscale or just download it at the current size. But what about the layers system? If I come down the bottom left here to layers, I can add a new layer. I can add from URL or add from file. So what this means is if I wanted to say, take something from this image or one of these other images. So maybe I take a look and I really like some of this background here. I can download this image and save the current edit or save the original generation. I'm gonna save the current edit to essentially save what I see on screen. And now when I go add, I can add from file, choose this image here, and you can see it's been added to the top. Now I'm gonna turn this off for now. Come back to this layer and choose a different layout, such as this one here with the kind of like the car in the background. Now it's actually removed that layer, which I didn't expect, but I can add it again, add from file. And you can see now I have layer one and layer two. So what I can do now essentially grab my eraser tool, bring that up and I can start to erase and you see how it reveals the layer underneath. So this means I can effectively stack multiple layers and images into the editor. So now if I decide I wanna keep that wood panel there in the background, maybe I wanna just move the car into view, and keep everything else pretty much the same. I can work with that and I can get my eraser tool erase that back and then I can come down to layer two, select that down here and I can erase around that and attempt to have it sort of blend in in the background. So now I change my prompt to Samurai and New York City Street, old damaged photo, 
and see if it blends in this extra detail I've added and see how it's blended that in. I still have my usual four options. So it is the best example, but you can see pretty much how that works. And it's combined those into one layer. So this means you can stack. If I come back here, we've got both of our layers here. But if I choose one, it switches to that generation. So as you generate, it doesn't keep the layer system there. So each generation has a layer system that you can basically use with it. And then you're kind of flattening that at the end. But we can add multiple layers to our image and kind of almost photo bash a little bit within the mid journey editor. Now this image isn't the best example for that. So I'm gonna to cut to a different one to show you exactly how this works and something that's a bit more suitable for this tutorial. So now let's say I wanna add a few elements to this image right here. First of all, if I do head into the editor and I don't make any edits and I come out, it's not gonna save it. So what I wanna do actually is head back to organize because I wanna add this figure in front of the car. So I'm gonna come up the top here click copy image URL and then I can simply come back click on the car go down to the editor and now under the layers down the bottom here I click add add from URL I come up I paste in the URL I just copied and you can use this for any sort of JPEG or PNG you find online I click OK and now it's added the image in there so now I'm going to go to my smart select and piece by piece I start to select my character. I can select my warrior, click erase background. And now he's in the scene. I go up to move and resize and I can move him around. Now he doesn't necessarily blend in perfectly. You may notice there's a little bit of gray in there. Now smart select isn't perfect. So if I click on this, it seemed to select it pretty well. Erase selection. We're missing a little bit of the staff, but for now I can go up to paint, restore, get a really small brush size, and maybe I can just paint that in and touch that up by hand. So we have our samurai man here. Now, one thing you'll notice is there's no shadow here to the side with him. So I'm gonna to go to layer two and erase some of the ground around him so that mid journey can generate a shadow. But on top of that, I can continue to add elements. So I go add from file, this clock. I'm gonna to head to smart select and every now and then you will get a bit of an error. So if I actually hit select background, it actually failed at that time. I had a bit of trouble with this image before. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint this one out and show you a solution in a little while. So I'm going to just simply paint. It's a nice, simple shape, so that's not a big deal. Head to move and resize, size that down. I'm gonna put it up on the wall, sort of matches the aesthetic and the angle a little bit. But also again, coming back to that bottom layer because I want it to blend in. So I come back, erase, and I just erase around the clock so that it blends in. But this is another trick I think is really, really handy. This time I go to add from file, maybe I want to add this dog here, but the smart select does play up a little bit and actually cutting that out by hand could be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to cancel. I'm going to cut out the background with Adobe's free background remover. I start by heading to Google. So I come to the search bar and type in Adobe Background Remover. Search, click on the free image background remover. I'll leave a link in the description, but otherwise I drag the dog image in. You can see it's removed the background. I go download, save it in this file. So now when I head back to Mid Journey, I can actually even just drag and drop it in and it will drag it in as a new layer. I click move and resize Seems like a bit of a big so the dog. So maybe I pop the dog here. Keeping in mind that transparent PNGs can be problematic blending in because this is an object, it will probably work quite well. But if you're trying like a logo or something like that to place a background, it actually tends to play up a little bit. So we have our objects in the scene. They don't necessarily blend perfectly, but for now we can sort of see what results we get. I'm gonna type in, Samurai looks at a futuristic car with a dog sitting beside him. I submit that edit. Now keep in mind my prompt has a few parameters added to it because I kept them here from earlier. So I'm just gonna reset that for now for the next one and see how it's blended the dog and the samurai into the scene and the clock. So this these elements don't match stylistically though, but it is still pretty cool. But that's what I wanna to touch on the next step that we can play with, which is retexture. So I come up the top here to retexture and I can actually suggest a prompt here if I want to. So I'm gonna actually click that 
And you can see it's actually suggested a prompt for me. I'm gonna get rid of the 6.1 because I wanna use version seven. I have version seven selected down here. You'll notice it now says submit retexture. So this means it will take this image and use it and the layout of it to generate another image. I submit and I've got a few different options. Now the recommended prompt didn't quite work as well as I wanted. If I head back to this image here, where we all have all of these bits and pieces, I can actually type in the end, the same style I use for the bottom image here. So I can still type my own prompt. I'm gonna get rid of these here. But essentially I can use this as a way to lay out what it is I wanna generate. So now it seems that in mid journey, if you wanna do, if you want to guide what it is you wanna see in the image, using retexture is a really powerful way to take a bit more control over what it is you're doing. So now I hit submit retexture. And you can see our images now are looking a bit better. It hasn't held on to the color, but overall, I think it looks pretty decent. But just remember, if we head back to this image here, is we can also say a samurai looks at a red futuristic car. I can also add in something like clock punk style, and I can start to then work on improving my prompt to get what I want out of this. Keeping in mind, we've had two images. We've imported a photo and imported another AI art image and cut it out. So there are definitely a few different options here. And if you wanted to sort of use the same image in the background twice, like I said, you could download that image, re-upload it and take sections from it to place it on the scene. So let's see what results we get with this new prompt. And now our image looks a bit more like what we imagined. And we could pick the one we think look, looks best, which I think this one so far. Now keep in mind, that this is a painting. If I remove the painter by Thomas Kincaid, I can change the style. So I can say something like cinematic movie screen cap, photorealism, submit. And then we get a few more sort of photorealistic options. So the editor combined with the retexture is a very powerful tool. I do recommend actually generating your edit and then retexturing if you're gonna be doing that. But if I'm still not happy, I can submit again and go a bit further down that rabbit hole. Again, I think this one looks the best. Keeping in mind, we've lost the dog's face. I go back to edit, erase, type in dog's face, submit, and now I've got a better dog's face. So you can still do those little touch-ups and edits if you really want to. Another thing you can do is if I head back out, this time I'm gonna to go to edit new image. I'm gonna drag in a drawing I created. I come up to retexture, paste in my prompt, submit, and I've been able to completely transform my drawing into something a little bit more photorealistic. I really like this one. So I can upscale to gallery. And now that it's been upscaled, I have this really, really cool image based off my drawing. Now there are a ton of use cases for this tool when it comes to AI art or even just for photo editing in general. It's very powerful and I'm gonna cover it a bit more in some future videos. But for now, I highly recommend if you've watched this, go in and have a bit of a play with the editor and experiment with some ideas, maybe even start a project and see what you can make happen because it's definitely gonna be something in the future that's gonna evolve further. And if you get in now, learn the ropes, you can sort of learn those bits and pieces as they get updated and basically turn yourself into a bit of a mid-journey editing pro over time. So check that out, head to midjourney.com, try out the editor. And if you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, that is the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful, interesting. If you did, please consider giving the video a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day and thanks for watching.